guys, welcome back. This is Patrick again from Specifics Prep, and today we're going to cover a very important type of uh, question on the SAT, and that is sentence completions. Now, on the reading section, we're going to deal with 67 questions altogether, 19 of which are sentence completions, so it's a little under a third, uh, which means that you're going to earn about 200 points uh, just on sentence completions, and that's a really important thing to remember because mastering sentence completions uh, means uh, quick improvement in your score. Uh, now, when you're working on sentence completions, there's two things you're going to need to worry about. First is having a strong vocabulary. There's no substitute for knowing what the words mean on the test, and that's something we're going to discuss as the lesson progresses. The second thing you really want to keep in mind is that you have to have a good technique. That is, you have to avoid falling in uh, the traps that uh, ETS lays for you in the SAT, and we'll talk about that right now. So, got my blue book with me. Uh, excellent resource. And I'm just picking a question at random. Uh, and I'm just going to demonstrate how the typical student uh, approaches a sentence completion question. I'm going to read it first. It's number five out of six. It says, the fashion designer favored fabrics that were so blank as to be virtually transparent. So a student reads that and then immediately goes to the answer choices, and that's really bad. He sa says, um, fashion designer favorite fabrics that were so palpable as to be virtually transparent. Well, I'm not quite sure what that means. Mm, I'll, I'll cross it off. Um, fashion designer favorite, favorite fabrics that were so diaphanous as to be virtually transparent. I've never heard of that word before. I'm going to cross that off. Um, fashion designer favorite fabrics that were so variegated as to be virtually transparent. Thanks. Vocabulary. Uh, I'll leave that for now. Uh, luxurious. The fashion designer favorite fabrics that were so luxurious as to be virtually transparent. Well, that makes sense. I mean, they should be luxurious. It's fashion. I don't know how to put a check next to that one. And then, uh, fashion designer favorite fabrics that were so anomalous as to be virtually transparent. I have heard that word before, but I'm not quite sure what it means. Ugh, I guess I'm going with D. And guess what? That student just wasted 45 seconds and got the wrong answer. So that's uh, a really powerful demonstration of why it's important to have a strong vocabulary and have a good technique, and that's what we're going to talk about today. One last thing that I want to point out is just like the math, the sentence completion questions follow order of difficulty. That is, the questions get difficult as the numbers progress. So number five out of six, I mentioned that before, is going to be about as hard as sentence, uh, sentence completions get, uh, either because of vocabulary or because the sentence is hard to understand. And we're going to look at both variations on that. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the thing we're going to focus on when we're doing these questions is answering in our own words. The answer choices are our enemies, okay? So I'm actually going to take my hand and cover up the answer choices for now, all right? Uh, say, despairing that the performance of the manager would ever improve, the chief executive took decisive action and blanked him. Okay, uh, it makes sense that if they're despairing and they don't think it will ever improve, they're going to fire him. And you know what? That's a good answer. If this were a free response test, I would mark fired as correct. Unfortunately, it's not. It's a multiple choice. Uh, but now that we have a word, we can just match it up with uh, the answer choices and just pick the one that matches the word that we said, right? We said fired. Cuddled. Does cuddled mean fire? No. Taunted. Does taunted mean fired? No. Prodded. Does prodded mean fired? No. Ousted. Ousted means, you know, kicking someone out of something. Fired. That's pretty darn close. I'm going to put a check next to it. I'm not going to circle it just yet. Uh, and then chided. Chided does not mean fired. Okay. And that's that. Now this is just the number two. Like I said, the number indicates the difficulty. Uh, so it's not the world's hardest question, but it's a really good example of how we answer these questions. We read the sentence, ignore the answers, answer in our own words. Let's try it again on number seven. Okay. The colonel was so widely suspected of blank during the war that his name eventually became synonymous with disloyalty. If he was widely suspected of something and his name became synonymous with disloyalty, what do you think that word's going to be? Again, let's not look at the answers. Well, disloyalty is a really good word. It's right there. We don't need to come up with our own word uh, if there's already a really good word uh, there. So our word will be disloyalty, and that's fine. Uh, again, it would be a terrible sentence if that's what it actually was, you know, disloyalty, disloyalty but uh, it's the right definition. That's all we care about right now. So, uh, we'll start to see why a number seven is a number seven when we go to the answer choices, right? We see words that are tough, right? We see belligerence. If you don't know what belligerence means, put a question mark next to it. It's okay. Indigence. Indigence means... Oh, 
I don't know what that means. Uh oh. Alright. Perfidy. Certainly don't know what that means. Aspersion. I've heard it, but I can't define it. And then tenacity. Uh, tenacity means uh, sort of uh, stick to itiveness, right? Uh, having a nice sort of um, uh, hold on something. That certainly doesn't mean disloyalty, so I'm going to get rid of uh, tenacity. Now, we're starting to see why vocabulary is such an important issue. Now, if you want to improve your vocabulary, you have to start studying now. Uh, now, if you follow the link at the bottom of the page, you'll see that uh, I've actually created a list of the 300 most commonly tested words on the SAT. Uh, and uh, I've already made flashcards for you, so all you got to do is log in and print them out. Uh, you're welcome. So, uh, I know the correct answer. I know that perfidy means disloyalty. Uh, so I'm going to circle that. However, a uh, student who had four question marks and one cross off should probably leave this one blank uh, and move on. Alright, let's try another one. Uh, number eight, hard question. The physicist's description of the semitopic particle was truly blank, devoid of any emotion or personal prejudice. Very, very classical SAT construction. Blank, comma, definition, right? So, the word means devoid of any emotion or personal prejudice. You can use a word like unemotional, right? This is not rocket scientist. Uh, <laughs> rocket science. Uh, you use a word like unemotional, devoid of any emotion, right? Uh, and that's it, okay? If you couldn't come up with a word, you could use the entire phrase, right? You could say devoid of any emotion or personal prejudice. That's what my word means. Either one's fine, right? So we have dispassionate, not passionate, unemotional, pretty darn close. Insubstantial, not substantial. Does not match unemotional, right? Esoteric. Most students don't know what that means, so I'm going to put a question mark next to it. Uh, capricious, also a question mark for most students. And indignant means resentful. Okay, so we're going to cross off that one. In this case, we have an answer we like, two answer choices that we're not sure about, and then uh, two cross-offs. Any student who's in this situation should do this, right? It's really important to uh, acknowledge that you like an answer, even if you don't know what they all mean. Uh, a happens to be the correct answer here. So, nice work. So, remember, co blank, comma, definition, use the definition. Right? All right, and lastly, one that doesn't quite contain the definition, but we can use common sense if we know what the words mean. It says, uh, number five, the sound produced by the youth choir was so blank that even its least experienced members were abashed. Now, abashed is a vocabulary word, right? Abashed means embarrassed, right? So, what would the sound have to be like for the youth choir's members to be embarrassed? They would have to sound bad, right? The sound produced by the youth choir was so bad. Hard to listen to, right? And again, we look at the answer choices, we start to see why this 5 out of 6 is a hard question, because the voc vocabulary is difficult. We have cacophonous. Yikes. Question mark, right? Syncopated, syncopated, syncopated. You music people out there will know what it means. If you don't, question mark. Uh, I happen to know what it means, and it is not uh, the correct answer. Harmonic, that's, uh, looks like it's the opposite of what we're looking for. We're going to get rid of that. Collaborative, they may have been working together, but that doesn't mean bad, right? And that's uh, another example of why we don't want to go straight to the answer choices. And mellifluous, um, yikes. Um... I don't know what that means either. Okay, so oh, just to be clear, I know what they mean. I'm um, just uh, sort of modeling a student. Um, okay, down to two. Whenever you're down to two and you're sure that the ones you've crossed off are certainly uh, incorrect, I want you to guess. Okay, the correct answer in this case happens to be cacophonous, uh, which uh, again uh, I know because I have a strong vocabulary, like you should. Um, but in this case, even if I guessed wrong, I would still be ahead of the curve statistically speaking. Alright, now let's take a look at two blank sentence completions. Number four, medium difficulty, two blanks. Now you would think that two blanks would uh, mean twice as much work uh, and make them harder, but two blanks are actually a lot easier, especially for students who don't have a str as strong a vocabulary. I'll show you why. Um, same start, right? Eric's gullibility was remarkable. Colon. He blanked the most outrageous assertions and was therefore much too easily blank. Okay, so we're familiar with this kind of construction where it sets it up and gives us some sort of punctuation and then the rest, which means that these are definitionally related, right? The, the, um, the two clauses are definitionally related, and that's, that's important to remember. But the first thing we want to do is decide which of the two blanks is easier to come up with a word for. We're going to do these one at a time, right? Uh, so he's gullib 
ability. Gullible means that you believe things too easily. Uh, so he believed the most outrageous assertions. So believed. Okay, I like that. It's a great word. So uh, rather than trying to come up with a word for the second plague, now we're going to go straight to the answer choices and start crossing them out. Right. So look at just the first word here. Trusted. Does trusted mean believed? Sure does, right? We're going to leave it for now. Processed. Does process mean believed? No. Proposed. Does proposed mean believed? No. Repeated. Does repeated mean believed? No. Believed. Does believed mean believed? Yes. Okay. Now, I was confident that I could cross off B, C, and D because I knew that the first word was no good, right? Once the first word is no good, it doesn't matter what the second word is. And it's a really important concept to remember is, um, uh, you know, Two blank sentence completions give you double the opportunities to cross off answer choices. So, now that I have my first word, I'm going to do the second word and I'm only going to look at answer choices A and E. Uh, so, he believed the most outrageous assertions and was therefore much too easily... Uh, well, if he believed outrageous assertions, he was easily tricked. Okay, uh, so we have duped. Now, let's just say for argument's sake, I don't know what duped means. I'm going to put a question mark next to it. I'm not going to look at B, C, or D. They're out already. And then I'll go get E, imitated. Imitated, tricked, no, right? So as much as we like believed, it matched exactly. Imitated, it's out. The whole answer is out. A is our answer. So two blanks, do one at a time. Now there's another type of two blanks that we're going to look at, and that is uh, two blanks that have a parallel structure. Okay, in this case it says Rush was both blank and blank. And we see that colon. He was blatantly proud and offensively bold. In this case, we have what we call a parallel construction, and that is we have two blanks right next to each other, and then two definitions right next to each other. And this is easy, we just line them up on a one-to-one -one thing. So this first um, sort of clue here is going to line up with our first blank, and the second one here is going to line up with our second blank. And again, if you're comfortable using these words, just use them, right? You don't have to come up with your own word. Blatantly proud is the definition, right? So let's start with the first one. Blatantly proud. Does haughty mean blatantly proud? Sure does, right? Irresolute does not mean blatantly proud. Arrogant, I'm sorry, presumptuous? Mm, let's see, question mark. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, arrogant, blatantly proud? Sure. Reverent, blatantly proud? No. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the second blank. Offensively bold. Somebody who's bold. Impudent. Uh, let's say for argument's sake, I don't know what impudent means. Loquacious. Every high school student should know what loquacious means. English teachers love this word. Loquacious means talkative. Uh, I'm sure they use it to describe some of you. Uh, talkative does not mean offensively bold, though, right? So I'm going to get rid of that. And good news, even though we didn't know presumptuous, we can still cross off uh, C. And then we have contemptuous. Oh, sorry. We have uh, articulate. Articulate has nothing to do with be, uh, being offensively bold. So again, as much as we liked arrogant, it's out. Is the correct answer. Okay, so two blanks, one at a time. Be uh, on the lookout for parallel construction. The last type of question we're going to talk about is two blanks when there isn't enough information for um, coming up with our own words. In this case, we have a number five. This is five out of six, so it's hard. It says Paul is blank, examining his own feelings and motives. He cannot tolerate blank. Right? In this case, you say, "Uh oh, if I come with my own word here." It's going to change the other word. So, for instance, I could say Paul is very good at examining his own feelings and motives. He cannot tolerate people who are bad at examining their own feelings and motives. So we have a you know a sort of an opposite relationship. Or I could say he's very bad at examining his own feelings and motives. He cannot tolerate looking at his own uh, feelings and motives. So in either case, we have um, a sort of um, the potential to pick wildly different words that go in these blanks. And uh, my point is, we cannot answer our own words for these particular questions, but instead we have to focus on the relationship between the blanks. Um, we want to make sure that we pick words that have opposite relation. So in this case, I know that if you're good at this, you're going to be something negative, or if you're bad at this, it's going to be something positive. So we're talking about a negative relationship. That is, the blanks move in opposite directions. So all you have to do is go through the answer choices and find the answer choice with the negative relationship. Right? So we have accustomed to and adulation. So
positive, positive, not a negative relationship, right? We have a verse to, and we have self-evaluation. A verse is against it, self-evaluation is, is a positive thing. This is a negative relationship, and it's good. Mindful of, introspection, positive, positive. Embarrassed about, deduction, negative, negative. And then leery of, and spontaneity. Let's say question mark for this one. So again, we have a question mark, we have a check mark. What are we going to pick? Check mark. So, when there's not enough information in the sentence to come up with your own words, you are going to focus on the relationship between the blanks. And the good news is, you'll only see one or two of these per test. So out of the 19 sentence completion questions, you only have to deal with this particular type of question once or twice. Uh, so it's not a huge deal. But just be aware that they're out there. Well, that wasn't so bad. We're going to do both types of sentence completions, a single blank and two blanks. Uh, remember, it's all about answering your own words. Uh, once you have your own word, it's much easier to go through the answer choices and use price elimination. It's all about matching what you think the answer should be to what the answers actually are. Uh, remember, the other side of really doing well in the sentence completions, uh, and really the entire critical reading section, is having a very strong vocabulary. So if you visit this link at the bottom of the page, you will get access to 300 totally free flashcards. Uh, and these words are the most frequently tested words on the SAT. I've analyzed over 17 tests and uh, really come up with a list of uh, the words that appear the most frequently. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and check out that link. Alright, see you in a few weeks. Bye.